Hey guys, this is Rick. I thought I'd go a, a little deeper into exactly where Blockstream, the company now apparently defunct, went wrong and took Bitcoin, the BTC fork of Bitcoin, with it. What happened was that Blockstream, the company, tried to be a vertical and a horizontal in the marketplace at the same time. And that, frankly, does not work. Let's take a look at how. So, a little provocatively called how Blockstream, the company, failed and took the BTC fork of Bitcoin with it. Blockstream, for all, for all intents and purposes, is now a defunct company. Its team page was deleted or removed from, from existence. De developers seem to be leaving Blockstream left, right and center and so on. And, and one single investor reinvested in Blockstream. The other nine apparently actively declined to throw more money throw good money after bad, as the uh, Americans say. So, what happened? Let us first establish that even though Bitcoin Core is supposedly an open source and open development environment where anybody can contribute, there is or was a company called Blockstream which had individuals affiliated with it or loyal to it, or even outright employed by it, or owning stake in it, on key choke positions. And these choke points turned out to be the entire ecosystem of BTC development, Bitcoin, the BTC fork of Bitcoin development. They held the mailing list, as in if you posted something that was against business interests of the Blockstream company, Blockstream the company, it was deemed off topic or trolling or inflammatory or whatever other reason that suited the day and so you, you would never reach the community. The protocol improvement process, the so-called BIPs, Bitcoin Improvement Proposal, was controlled by this. If you had a proposal that went against Blockstream the company, it would never see the light of day in the first place. The discussion forum, bitcointalk.org, as well as the subreddit, where slash r slash bitcoin, where discussion happened, were heavily moderated, some would call it censored, to just outright delete any point that pointed in a direction which was not aligned with Blockstream's interests. And last but not least, obviously, the source code repository where the people who could actually change the source code of the BTC fork of Bitcoin were populated with people who are loyal to, affiliated with, or owned part of the company Blockstream. With that established, this company, this entity Blockstream, had the BTC fork of Bitcoin in a complete chokehold. And the problem, as I said, with their business model was that they tried to be a vertical and a horizontal at the same time. What does that mean? What does that mean? A horizontal, usually painted like this. A horizontal means that you have something which other people are supposed to, allowed to, and encouraged to build on top of. To illustrate, let's look at the Internet Protocol, IP. IPv4 addressing, IPv6 addressing. This is nice, but it doesn't do much in itself. In order, to build, in order to make it useful, somebody created the transmission control protocol on top of IP. In combination, it's called TCP IP. Somebody else created the user datagram protocol on top of the internet protocol. Together, it's called UDP IP. And then people started building things on top of these in turn. Movie transmissions and conference transmissions are built on UDP IP, the World Wide Web protocol, wise known as Hypertext Transport Protocol, is built on top of TCP IP, and web sockets are built on top of this, and, and subtitles are built on top of this, and so on and so forth. When you have a horizontal business model, you want other people to build on top of what you have. 
because it solidifies your existence. Once usage somewhere up here has taken off, then your existence further down in the chain, further down in the technology stack, is assured. Business-wise, it looks like this. You're offering a free platform, which anybody can build on top of, and then you have a moneymaker, which is offering a few select services on top of this free platform. The idea being that when other people are offering things that are not your offering, but a different offering on top of your platform, it drives uptake of the platform and so increases the potential market, market leads if you like, for people who would be using your moneymaker. This is not a bad business model. Automatic, a company spelled with two T's, three even, uses this for their flagship product WordPress, which, which you probably heard of. The WordPress product as such is free. If you want to install it and host it on your own server, go ahead, be welcome, be our guest. If you want us to host it for you, we'd be more than happy to do so and save you the hassle. No requirement, we're just happy to help you out. Other people ha are building tons of stuff on top of WordPress because it's so dominant in setting up, a web uh, setting up any website that Automatic is a billion dollar company or is valued in excess of one billion dollars. This is not a bad business model. This is what Blo Blockstream tried to do and then got lost in the process. So this is also known as the freemium model, which is opposed to the vertical, which is opposed to a vertical, where you control the entire vertical stack of services and where nobody is allowed to latch in anywhere. The typical example of this would be t the telecom industry. They control the wires in the ground, the signaling in those wires, the switching equipment that treat those signals, the routing equipment that selects how the signals are going, how the circuits are connected, and the voice application on top of that. This is also why the all the entire telecom industry hate the internet because it's turning their nice vertical into a horizontal which other people can build off and it's turning them into a dumb pipe which essentially destroys their pride. Telecom is an example of a vertical. You are not invited into hooking stuff into the telecom network without prior written permission in triplicate from a, a telecom operations lawyer. Other examples would be Apple and Twitter. It's important to remember that even though Apple has a really, really big ecosystem at this point, Steve Jobs was initially very critical of letting third parties into the App Store. Steve Jobs wanted Apple to have the entire offering, top to bottom, a vertical. Twitter is another example where a couple of years back they started discouraging, as they called it, people to offer a different end-user experience of Twitter than Twitter's own, essentially forbidding people to build on top of it, which is why Twitter is bleeding money today, worst in class in the industry, and hasn't even found a business model. Apple's doing better, but you shouldn't count on replicating Apple's success. So, back to, back to Blockstream. The idea was to nurture and develop Bitcoin being an open platform that other people could build off and have something called side chains as their, free, as their premium offering where you would exchange tokens and you could store any asset class as side chains connected to and pegged to the Bitcoin network. In this way it would be totally secure and you could still have freedom to innovate using these side chains. This is, how Bitcoin, this is how Blockstream was going to make money. An initial problem, of course, is that there is already somebody making a lot of money in the Bitcoin ecosystem, and that's the miners 
who are out here, who are not part of Blockstream's offering. They're making an enormous amount of money, which is not going to Blockstream. So the key business problem for Blockstream was how do you, how do you get the money generated here to instead be generated here? Part of that was to decouple Bitcoin from, from their offering, which is why it's called pegged to, to the Bitcoin network, but not actually part of the Bitcoin network. That's how the money would be generated into something that would go into Blockstream's coffers instead of the mining coffers. Which is why you're seeing these schizophrenic messages from Blockstream supporters praising and even bragging about the security of the Bitcoin network, which is provided by the miners out here, and at the same time complaining loudly about how greedy the miners are and what bad people they are, and still bragging about the security they provide. It's, it comes across as a little two-faced. Regardless, this was the business model. Kind of looks sound. Kind of looks sound. But what Blockstream didn't consider was that other people would also see this opportunity. And Blockstream panicked when somebody called Counterparty out here did just that. Counterparty provided everything that the sidechains would have provided. And not only did so better, they were 18 months to two years ahead of Blockstream's development. This was a Blockstream killer. Blockstream provided the open platform on which Counterparty was built. And this was a threat to Blockstream making money. And this particular moment in time is where Blockstream goes wrong. Where it decides to not be able to decide whether it's a horizontal or a vertical offering. If it were a horizontal offering, it would encourage Counterparty. It would go out of its way to make Counterparty a better offering in the hope of increasing adoption of this piece, thereby automatically increasing adoption of this piece and therefore increasing the market for their premium, offer premium offering. That is the horizontal business model. What Blockstream did was the opposite they decided to put up all obstacles they could for Counterparty becoming successful and eventually made sure that nobody could build anything threatening the sidechains on top of this Bitcoin open, so-called open layer. By congesting it, by limiting its utility, by limiting the available block space and so on and so forth. This is, this particular image, is where Blockstream cannot decide whether it's a horizontal or a vertical market offering. And that is exactly why it's failed. And unfortunately took the BTC fork of Bitcoin down with it. If, you're, if you want to go into the nit nitty details of the drama that happened here, it is something about a uh, operation code, an instruction in the Bitcoin network scripting language called Operation Re Return, which originally was supposed to have 80 bytes of data with it, which was far sufficient for Counterparty. But once Blockstream realized that this will make Counterparty so powerful and successful that its own offering won't be able to compete, it crippled the op return code to only have 40 bytes of data and eventually went out of their way to make the Bitcoin layer not buildable upon. Trying to act like a vertical while presenting itself as a horizontal. There was a lot of drama about this. There still is a lot of drama about this. There's the <laughs> running joke that Bitcoin BTC is not a store of value, it's a store of drama. But this drama was actually what, co what caused Vitalik Buterin to not build Ethereum on top of Bitcoin, which is what it's supposed to have been, but build Ethereum as a blockchain of its own, which is now far, far more successful 
than Bitcoin BTC in terms of usage and transactions. So Blockstream was presenting a horizontal offering, but acting like a vertical offering. That's exactly where they went wrong. That's exactly where they failed business-wise. And so, eventually, since the, since the Blockstream company and the community that went with it had demonstrated that they would, be a, they would be prepared, they were prepared to go out of their way to prevent other people from building useful things on top of Bitcoin BTC. Things stopped being built on top of Bitcoin BTC, the, the Blockstream fork of Bitcoin. Instead, all the pre-Blockstream era entrepreneurs went on to other places where they're now trying to recreate this open platform. In Bitcoin BCH, you're seeing a ton of new operations codes being proposed in the scripting language of the network, which is going to enable a ton of new interesting technical innovation. They went to Bitcoin BCH or to other, uh, or to other cryptocurrencies. They are not sticking around with this essentially failed company and the community that keeps uh, that keeps sticking around to it. And so these entrepreneurs are now trying to repair the damage that Blockstream caused by not having its business model straight, knowing whether it was a horizontal or a vertical in the market, which eventually caused it to fail. And unfortunately, take the BTC fork of Bitcoin down with it. What you're seeing now in terms of block the Blockstream community trying to salvage its business model is again doing something called Lightning, Lightning Network, which is not sidechains per se, but which fulfills the exact same business function of moving the money flow from the mining process into Blockstream's sphere of control. Obviously, this is not going to sit well with miners because they stand to lose a lot of revenue. So miners are going to be fighting this which is where we're coming back to this two-facedness of the Blockstream community. On one hand, saying that miners are greedy and evil, on, on the other hand, bragging about the security they provide. But we're going to come back to this particular little box, the Lightning Network, in next week's, uh, next week's shot. And wow, <laughs> is there a lot to say about the Lightning Network? <laughs>